Hello, I'm Hannah Sachs, Editor-in-Chief of NEJM Evidence, and this is Stat Stat. You're vacationing by the coast and you think, maybe today's the day to go whale watching. Most of your friends are psyched to join, but one friend is concerned about the recent news reports of orcas attacking boats. You suspect it is very unlikely that your boat would be attacked, and remind your friend that, first off, while orcas are cetaceans like the whales you'd be watching for, they're in the dolphin family, so not the same at all. Second, those orca stories have been about encounters with yachts, not commercial whale-watching boats. Your friend seems skeptical. Fortunately, your other friend, a statistician, suggests gathering more data. She proposes going down to the harbor and asking captains about recent cetacean attacks on the open seas. You think this could be useful, but what counts as an attack? Should you only ask about sinkings, which have got to be pretty rare? Well, it's not just sinkings you care about. You want to know collectively about all the different outcomes that could lead to a really bad whale-watching day. Call it major adverse cetacean events, including sinkings, bumpings, and persistent boat chasing. You realize this approach of creating one measure that combines multiple outcomes is a lot like using a composite outcome in a clinical trial. In a randomized trial, composite outcomes can make a trial more efficient and are sometimes used when events of interest are rare. Imagine a trial of a new drug that targets atherosclerosis. To have sufficient power to detect a difference, if there is one, between the treatment and placebo for a relatively rare event, say, cardiovascular death, would require the recruitment of a large number of participants, perhaps many thousands, and following them for a long time, perhaps many years, to accrue the needed number of cardiovascular deaths. Combining related outcomes into a composite outcome, like major adverse cardiovascular events, or MACE, which includes myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular death, increases the event rate, allowing a smaller sample size over a shorter follow-up period. Such an approach may cost less, deliver the answer more quickly, and limit the number of people exposed to a treatment that doesn't have proven safety or efficacy. So what are the laws of the sea when it comes to composite outcomes? First, the components of the composite should reflect the disease process on which the treatment is trying to intervene. In this case, atherosclerosis is a common cause of MI, stroke, and cardiovascular death. Second, the composite outcome should be clinically meaningful. Third, composite outcomes should be reported as the single primary outcome of the trial. Each component of the composite, MI, stroke, or cardiovascular death, would be secondary outcomes. Importantly, the trial is powered for the composite outcome, not the individual components. Nevertheless, investigators will be able to observe whether the direction of the effect is consistent for these secondary outcomes. But of course, using a composite outcome has downsides to consider. First, each component of a composite outcome is typically given equal weight, even though each component might not be equally important. Cardiovascular death is likely more meaningful to patients and doctors than an uncomplicated MI. Second, how frequently an event occurs influences its effect on the composite. If MIs are more common than cardiovascular death, those events will make up the greatest component of the composite. A problem could arise if the treatment does not prevent MIs, which are relatively common, but does lower rates of cardiovascular death, which is pretty rare. In this case, you would not find a treatment effect on the primary outcome, leading investigators to a false negative result, or type 2 error. Third, if the trial uses a time-to-event analysis, Once a participant has any event in the composite, they are considered to have had the outcome. Imagine in the atherosclerosis trial, if one participant has an MI and then a stroke and ultimately dies, only the time to the first event contributes towards the primary outcome for that person. There are statistical approaches that aim to overcome some of these issues that we won't get into here. With this understanding of some of the nuances, you consider the trade-offs and decide to stick with a composite outcome as you head out to talk to captains about major adverse cetacean events. And you're glad you did. Your comprehensive data showing that the composite of sinkings, bumpings, and chasings is incredibly rare no matter the boat type are just what was needed to convince your friend to join. And now you're off to watch some whales. <laughs>